Fellow Kenyans, brothers and sisters, we have all come to the profound realization that our country is on sale. Shockingly, the buyer is also the seller. Kenya yetu inauzwa na chakushangaza muuzaji ndiye mununuzi. In the year 2013, a group of powerful individuals sat in a room and made a plan to be the wealthiest men in the world to the disenfranchisement of many Kenyans. They hatched a grand scheme that would earn them an empire only similar to the Russian oligarchs. It was simple. Steal as much as you can, make Kenya poor as much as you can, then bring back the money that has been stolen and buy everything that is valuable in Kenya, then dominate the people as their landlords. However, they had to overcome one obstacle. Kenya had just received a new constitution, which required every shilling of revenue, including money borrowed, to be deposited in the consolidated fund. From there, it would be allocated by parliament to the recurrent and development expenditure, withdrawals of which would be made with the approval of the controller of budget, and the auditor general would audit it. These individuals decided to cheat the law. They tasked the Honorable Kimani Shumwa, then the chairman of budget, to table and pass an amendment to the Public Finance Management Act, which will allow them to open government accounts abroad and to even spend abroad. The unconstitutional law allowed them to open several accounts across the world without parliamentary approval, borrowing money on behalf of the people of Kenya, stealing it without getting to the consolidated fund. A very convenient escape from the control of budget and the Auditor General's audit. Since that time, fellow Kenyans, our country has been robbed in a despicable manner. So much money has been stolen that the figures look absolutely unbelievable. It is even difficult for me as Morara Kebaso to make Kenyans understand the magnitude and billions of trillions when most of them have never touched a million shillings in their life. This money was touched abroad in bank accounts across various continents, from Hong Kong to Cayman Islands to Jersey City to Dubai to Panama to Malta, money was stolen and kept abroad. This money was meant for your health care. It was meant for your children's education. It was meant for your own education. It was meant for development projects across the nation that would save Kenya and that would give millions of jobs. And it was stolen with uttermost greed and reckless abandon. Our country has been deliberately made poor. Why? It is because they want to make it cheap for the buyer. State corporations that employ very many Kenyans have been run down to intentionally make losses so that these individuals can justify privatization of these institutions. The hyenas of Kenya have decided they want to eat their own children and they have accused them of smelling like goats. Unfortunately, the hyenas want to eat everything, including national assets that are sensitive to national security a case in point is the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. The Kenyan law does not permit any Kenyan to buy any public asset unless through a very tedious process under the Asset and Disposal Act and many other laws. But here comes a foreigner who has been permitted to own 20% of our airport after a 30-year lease. What a shock! Something that any Kenyan cannot be allowed to do, regardless of how much money they have. And yet these are foreigners, and they are allowed to own this. The purported foreigners are not even foreigners. They are proxies for Kenyans 
who hide behind foreign names and foreign faces. Our money that has been stolen since 2013 when Uhuru Kenyatta was president has started coming back through proxies in the face of investors. They call it public-private partnership or privatization or foreign investment. Very sweet words for state capture and money laundering. In February of 2024, the Cabinet of Kenya, led by President William Ruto, approved the following state corporations for sale. The first one was the National Bank of Kenya, where the government of Kenya owns 22% and NSSF owns 48%. Consolidated Bank of Kenya, where the Deposit Protection Fund owns 50% on behalf of the government of Kenya. Development Bank of Kenya, where ICDC owns 89% on behalf of the government of Kenya. Agrochemical and Food Corporation ADC, where ADC owns 28% and ICDC owns 28%, all on behalf of the government of Kenya. These are state corporations that were supposed to be sold or privatized. Kenya Wine Agencies, 72% is owned by ICDC. East African Portland Cement Warehouses were demolished recently. NSSF owns 27% and Government of Kenya owns 25%. All this is the Government of Kenya ownership. Kenya Meat Commission was to be privatized, where the Government owns 100%. New KCC, Yamaziwa. Government of Kenya owns 100%. The Numerical Machining Complex under the Kenya Railways Corporation. 51% owned by University of Nairobi and 49% owned by Kenya Railways Corporation. Miwani Sugar Company, which is under receivership. The Government of Kenya owns 49%. Muhoroni Sugar Company, where uh, ADC owns 16%. Cabernet Hotel, where Kenya Trading Corporation owns 98.2%. Mount Elgon Lodge Limited, Kenya Trading Corporation owns 72%. Italia Municipal Council owns 13%. And Transoya County Council owns 13%. These were to be sold, all of them. Golf Hotel Limited. Kakamega Municipal Council owns 20%. Sunset Hotel, Kenya Trading, KTDC owns 95.4% and Kisumu City owns 4.6%. Kenya Safari Lodges, KTDC owns 63%. KWS owns 0.02%. Uh, Kenjen. Government of Kenya owns 70%. This was to be privatized. Kenya Pipeline Corporation, 100% owned by the government of Kenya, where money was stolen recently, it was to be privatized. Kenya Ports Authority, 100% owned by the government of Kenya, was to be privatized. There is another agency called the, the South Nyanza Sugar Company. It was also to be privatized where the government of Kenya owns 98%. Zoia Sugar, where the government of Kenya owns 97%. All these are state assets of great value. They employ several Kenyans. But these assets were supposed to be privatized in the name of allowing them to make profit. When they've been intentionally run down and made to make losses, so that the people who've stolen our money can find something to buy. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I know the buyers, and the buyer is also the seller, and the seller is the buyer. The mission for these people is to build empires that can be passed down through their descendants like royal families. But they want to do this by impoverishing and making us all poor. They want to do this all on the backs and in the sweat and tears and blood of dying Kenyans who can barely afford to eat. Today, we stand on ashes. We stand on a broken country that cannot afford basic necessities of life. Our natural resources, 
mined and taken abroad to develop other countries with no benefit to the Kenyan people except corrupt politicians in power. Our gold, our petroleum, our coltan, our gemstones, our titanium, our mica, our diatomite, all gone. Stolen by white people who bribe black people in power because they are too greedy to think of the future of their children. We have become beggars in our own nation. We are so angry and bitter that sometimes we forget and fight among us ourselves. We have lost any hope in our future. We are in a state of darkness. A thick smoke has engulfed our nation. We are a population which is poor, destitute, and drowning in the tears of sadness. While we continue to cry about the state of our nation, some individuals and their children are living large and enjoying fine things. They have bought helicopters, private jets, rare cars, luxury boats, expensive watches, expensive belts. They have bought holiday homes around the world and they have invested in building private cities. They have bought our banks. They control the sectors of our life. We cannot move without fueling in a petrol station that is owned by them. They process our food and we eat their brands. We have become beggars at home. Fellow Kenyans, were we born to be poor, sick and die? Aren't we entitled to human dignity? Why should we live like slaves at home? People of our nation, we have tolerated mediocrity for far too long. We have tolerated incompetent politicians who steal our money, insult us, abduct us, kill us, and continue to lead us as if they own us. We have become like pieces of furniture in a rich man's house. We need to liberate ourselves. We must set ourselves free from tribalism, corruption, and poor governance. We must liberate our minds. We need a new dream. And the time is now, not tomorrow. As a young man in this nation, I have tried my best to open your eyes. I continue to try every day. I have suffered arbitrary arrest. I have slept in cold police cells. I've been hit by metallic chairs on my head and on my neck. I've been threatened, trolled and insulted. My privacy has been invaded. I've lost my property. My previously quiet life has been turned upside down into chaos where every word I utter can be misunderstood and turned back against me in a sharp knife of condemnation. But I still stand tall and I hold my head high. I refuse to buy fear. I refuse to give up and I refuse to live like a slave. In my commitment, I have inspired many of you to join me in this journey. Now this is a movement for change. I don't claim to be perfect, but I am passionate. I am a team leader and a team player at the same time. I believe we can change it. It is time for us to come together. We need to put aside our ego, our personal pride, or self-importance of any kind. We need to reason together as a nation. We have different ideas. Some believe we should create systems and not individuals. I believe we should mentor individuals of integrity to take over systems and institutions. Well, we can disagree to agree. In that conversation, let everyone's voice be heard in silence. Let us not troll and deplatform those who have sacrificed to present themselves for the burden of leadership. Not everyone can lead. Some of us need to follow and support leadership by mentorship, correction, and prayer. Theirs is a journey of sacrifice. A yoke so heavy to bear, but in stride and grace they bear it. On this day, I want to thank those who have stood with me. Those who do not know me but defend my reputation on social media, 
and in gatherings of every kind. Those who fund my activities with their hard-earned money without counting losses. I thank the brave soldiers that fight with me every day. Together we have achieved much. Without political power, we have revived some stalled projects. We have exposed corruption and in some instances we have prevented it from happening. We are giants. The work we do is superhuman. We should do more of this every day and inspire other Kenyans to also do what they can do in their small ways and big ways. I also thank Kenyans of integrity who have stood with the nation. Notably, I want to recognize the effort of Honorable Kio Mchata, Honorable Richard Onyonka, Honorable Gadoni Wamuchomba, Honorable Jimmy Wanjigi, Eric Omondi, media personalities, content creators like Crazy Kena, musicians who have sung about bad governance like Nonini and Shanky, the Law Society of Kenya, judges, bloggers, spoken word artists like Oeba, YouTubers, TikTokers, Kenyans on X, civil society groups, whistleblowers, and all Kenyans of good intent. If I have not mentioned it, it's not because you're little, but because I may not be able to mention all of you. May you live to see the change that you're fighting for. And may you sacrifice and may your sacrifice be rewarded in abundance. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the government has learned about your sacrifice and your relentlessness. To divide and conquer you, they have opened several battles. They want to wear you down and scatter you so that you fight different battles in different directions. In less than three months, the country has witnessed controversial legislation on the extension of term limits of the president and parliament and on the agriculture bill, a, a distrustless health care system, worker strike, a divisive impeachment, university funding quagmire, an airport theft, abductions, killings, and so much more that we are confused which war to fight and which one to wait. This is deliberate and very intentional. It is the mission of those in power to wear us down and drain our energy. It's an emotional fatigue strategy. We must forge an alliance. We must combine our efforts and combine our problems into one message. Regime change. We need to completely overhaul the system. We need to recall members of parliament. We need a fresh election for the presidency before 2027. We are impatient. We cannot wait for 2027. We need to wipe out this corrupt system and their cousins, whichever way they come. To achieve this, we must fight for the reconstitution of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IBC, which has been deliberately dragged in the courts so that it is not formed. We need various efforts working towards the same goal. We may not do the same thing, but everybody can do something. Lawyers should file cases. Online activists should whip the masses. Musicians should make noise, uh, music. Journalists should inform the public. And every Kenyan should do whatever they can, including influencing other Kenyans in the mobilization against regime change. It will not be easy, but it will be worth it. And in all things, Nina Amini Tabadilika. Thank you and God bless you.